This mud pit has been the bane of my existence. Just below Bob's bobsled, this ride stopping section of the hill has been a nightmare to deal with. But rather than just building a boring boardwalk over it, I was determined to make this area fun. To achieve that, I hauled in tons of rock and sand to get a basic riding surface. We then built a shark fin with wood from a massive dead tree. All of this was covered in my previous video. But by the end of that video, the shark fin was more of an art project than a feature you could actually ride. With no entrance onto the fin and no proper landing, I still have a lot of work to do to get it rideable. So by the end of this video, we'll get all that done and ride it for the first time. Since the entrance to the fin is elevated from the ground, this area will need to be filled with dirt. To do this, we needed to create a crib. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, and in fact, we can use some pretty scrappy wood for this job. So if you remember when I cut this lightning hit stump, well, there's a lot of extra scrap here we can use for that crib. And uh, it's all kind of junky stuff, but it's perfect for that job. And Chris put together that retaining wall with those scraps and filled in the holes on the fin itself. And since dirt will hold water against the wood, we wrapped the area to prevent rot. Then it was just a matter of moving the dirt down the hill and into our new crib. Many hands make light work. For the first time, we now had the ability to actually roll onto the feature. Since Chris brought his bike along with him, he would be the first to try it out. Sick! Yeah, a little bit of a harsh landing. With the landing being completely flat, it wasn't super comfortable for Chris to hit the feature. But at least we know it works, and all that work wasn't for nothing. And thankfully, the first tire marks had been left on the feature without incident. The following day, I returned to the trail with my bike to test out the shark fin in its unfinished state and then to build the landing from those results. The only problem was... So today, it's time to build the landing. The only problem is, I don't know exactly how to build it. So coming off this wall ride, there's a lot of different scenarios where this landing needs to work. So for example, if you come off this side, you just need a small landing. But if you come off that side, you need a big landing further out. And then the other variable is how fast you're coming off the wall ride. Like right now, when I'm coming down the hill, I'm braking a lot. But potentially, it would be nice if you could just no brake it. But that would mean the landing would have to be way, way, way out there. But if you go slow, you'll probably just land like right there. So I think this is going to be a bit of trial and error, and I'll just have to try to find the best landing for the most situations possible. Although Bob's bobsled above is also a shark fin, it has a big, long downhill landing after it. You can hit it at pretty much any speed, and the landing will be pretty good. Unfortunately, our new shark fin doesn't have the benefit of a downhill landing. And with the feature being pretty unique to the area, I don't have much experience with them. Getting the landing right will be a matter of trial and error. After a few relatively slow attempts at the shark fin, I had an idea of where someone would land if they took it slowly. So from my very conservative tests, I'm landing about where this flag is. And I think I'll make the high point of the transition right here because I think I can go faster anyways. And then from there, we can uh, keep massaging and, and working at this. So for anybody coming off the top, if you flew off right now, you'd be landing in a mud pit. So I need to fill this out with sand and uh, make it uh, nice. With the trail widened, it was time to get working on that landing. Some logs dragged out of the nearby logging slash would make for good backing. And then hauling in dirt would create my first pass at the landing. It was time to test it out. I learned that when I exited the fin at a lower point, the landing worked pretty decent. But when I left the fin higher up, I traveled a bit further and passed the landing 
resulting in a heavy impact. I needed to make the landing quite a bit longer. In my last video where we built the actual fin, there was a comment asking what the difference between a shark fin and a wall ride is. And that's a great question. And to be honest, I've gotten this wrong as well. When we built Bob's bobsled, I was calling it a wall ride. But a wall ride is something that stays at more or less the same angle for the whole feature. A shark fin is similar, except that the angles get steeper as you ride through. It's more like a berm with an abrupt ending. Or sometimes it's a jump set at a weird angle. But either way, there's a lot of gray area when it comes to describing mountain bike features. So if you think this is a wall ride, I'm not going to argue with you. Over the next few days, I spent more time massaging the landing, basically making it longer and wider. The trick was to get rid of the curve in the landing and just straighten it out. With the landing in what I thought was a pretty good spot, I invited the people that helped out on this project to come down and try out the feature. Yuka was the first to arrive and it would be her first time riding a shark fin. And for a first timer, looking at something like this is a little intimidating at first. Like, how is this thing even supposed to work? What do you do in the air? It looks like you're just going to fly off sideways. But the best advice I can give here is to just ride it like a berm. When you ride a berm, you just kind of do it without thinking about it. The same applies here. And Yuka, who's fearless as always, oh, yeah. used that instinct and sent it with style. Well, that was pretty good. You look really smooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something problem? Bobby soon arrived to give the feature a try as well. He's only been riding mountain bikes for a few years, and like Yuka, a feature like this is new to him. And also like Yuka... You! That was awesome! He seemed to have the right instinct and got it clean. This was a good sign for the feature. If both Yuka and Bobby could hit it with no previous experience, it meant that I had done a decent job of designing it, which is a big weight off my shoulders. And then Chris showed up. Ooh, sick! And we had a true session on our hands. I wanted to see how fast I could hit the fin by going further up the hill with each pass and rolling down without brakes. Chris still hadn't tried the bobsled yet, so now would be the perfect time for him to give it a go. And riding the line all the way from the stump jump has never felt so good. finally coming together. It feels amazing to finally get the mud bog not so muddy anymore. It's been on my mind for much of this trail build, and as I slowly chipped away at it, I wondered if it could ever be good. But eventually I just had to bite the bullet and get it done. And with the shark fin running well, I'm just happy this portion of the project is behind me. And speaking of which, I need your help again. We need to come up with a name for the shark fin. I'd love to see your suggestions down below. But, as always, thanks for watching and stay gnarly. Rider! Oh. <laughs> I 
I went off the trail. <laughs>